Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And today's car is this, the VW ID Buzz. It's what the VW traditionalists have been screaming for since VW first showed concept cars of this, well, over a decade ago. They always promised and teased they were gonna build a replacement for the infamous T1 and T2. And it's finally here in pure electric form. Now I've got this car in because I can just see it's just one of those design statement, a bit like um, Land Rover Defender, if you like, or Mini. VW coming out with this is a big moment in VW's history. And I thought it was well worth getting in. It's a modern take on a tradition and something that reminds us of our past. And it's a very clever car in lots of ways. Now, this one, is actually, there's two versions just come out. The range starts with the life version, 57,115. And then this is the style version, which gets a few extra bits, 61,915. The two-tone paint on this one is an additional 1,800 pounds, and it's got an extra entertainment um, system in there as well, extra speakers or something. So this, as you see it here, 65,000, 465 pounds. There is actually a van version of this. In fact, this is a commercial car in VW speak. It's made at the commercial factory and the van is quite attractively priced, I think. 38,000 plus VAT. Anyway, what's this car all about? Let's go and have a closer look. Now, it's styled really on the Type 2 VW bus rather than the Type 1 that had that diving sort of heart-shaped split screen. Huge badge, there's no mistaking what this is. And yeah, it's just a very clean design and cab right forward. But, you know, in today's safety world, it's actually step back where you're sitting. I mean, the additional bus was literally a breeze block on and you got in right at the front and you almost sat over the front wheels. Not so in this one. This is a quite a nice design feature. It looks exactly the same as the Project 8. Who would have thought that the VW Buzz would copy the design language of the Jaguar Project 8? Anyway, come round. Oh, I ought to just say this actually opens up. There's a hatch here that pops open, but it's screen washed and that sort of thing. There's nothing particularly exciting. I am told, I haven't actually driven this car at night yet, but IQ lights, these are exceptional headlights and uh, no need to pay extra because they are so good anyway you come around now this is known as a split a pillar which is really useful when you're driving because you've got an additional window there it doesn't you know it's good visibility when you go on the front 20 inch wheels on this style version and the driver's door great big thing and you have a step up into the uh, driver compartment there all very clean I'll, get, I'll show you the interior in more detail when we get outside, but I do like the pedals. You've got stop and go or pause and go on the pedals, which is quite a fun touch. Slidey door at the back. And it, at the moment, this is the only configuration you can get. There's gonna be a long wheelbase, seven seater coming, etc. cetera. This is the five seater and those seats sort of slide forward as well. It's big though, isn't it? If you, were, if you buy your cars on volume, this is quite a big car. And yeah, it's a family car, this layout here. So you, as you won't be surprised, there is a huge boot on it. I open that up. This is all a bit odd to me, but um, yeah, parcel shelf, just a flimsy parcel shelf that obviously pops out, but there's a false floor on it because what they do is they have it so the seats go down and it's a level floor, but under here I've got all the cables and things, or you can take this out. I would have thought you'd have, you'd take it out so you could have your, put your mountain bikes and things like that in, but uh, they obviously thought a lot of practicality on it. And this sort of is the giveaway of a seven seater version or something, because there's sort of armrests here. It almost makes you think there might be a seat option on this car. Although it looks quite a big car, 4.7 meters long. So it's not as big as today's big SUVs and that sort of thing. But what it does offer is obviously a huge amount of space inside. This is its charge port here. I think it's 170 kilowatts. It can charge out something like that. But it's funny standing by it. Everything looks sort of chunkier and bigger and like those badges. It's slightly cartoonish, I suppose, with the, you know, especially the two tone. The van does away with the um, tinted windows, which are sort of standard on it. But yeah, it's an intriguing car to me because being its rear engine, well, it's rear motor and rear wheel drive, the battery sits down below, 77 kilowatt hour battery, range 250, 280 or something like that. But um, yeah, I'm just intrigued by it. It's a, it's a different take. So what I'm going to do now, take it outside, take it around the interior in better light, and then take it for a drive. It's 
huge. I can't get over the size of the doors when you get in and out of this thing. And yeah, you've got these sort of Range Rover armrests either side. Here we are, so I can sit here ready for autonomous driving. <laughs> Little wheel. Um, it feels like leather, but apparently it's not leather. There is no leather in this car at all, I am told. I mean, it must be fine. It's quite, it's quite a good fabric, obviously, here. These are mechanical seats, these ones. Apparently you can get electric. They are, and go up and down on there, and backwards and forwards there. It's, it's just different, and it's sort of this no sort of central tunnel, obviously, being electric. This peculiar thing, this is known as the box. If I press that, I can take out the centre console and leave a great big space for walk-through, etc. Now I've got to just place it in the right place. Other little tricks they've done in here. There you go, it's a little divider for the top of the box, but it's a bottle opener as well. Then at the front I've got yeah, a cup holder and an ice scraper, should you meet Arctic weather on the way out. Cup holders hide in there. I don't know, it's all sorts of oddments. I mean, I can't hardly reach the bottom of the door. It's, um, it's just a very different interior, dominated by this. Now, to bring it all along, it gets very upset if I don't put a safety belt on. That's how it knows there's a driver on board and he means business, and we are actually going to go somewhere. So yeah, I'll put that on, and uh, yeah, press the brake, and here we are. Everything's alive now. I don't know why it says, welcome VW Press and PR. No idea. If I twist this little thing here, I go into drive. It all lights up down there. If I go that way, I go into reverse. All very clever on there. Vast windscreen. It looks so far away. Almost feels I'm sitting in almost the passenger seat. You can see it's made by the van division. When I look behind and look how those seats are constructed, it's a very utilitarian sort of mean business sort of seat. It's not plush in the back. They do go backwards and forwards and you can actually tilt them as well. But anyway, enough of this. What I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take it as I see this car is going to be used first. So I'm going to, just as a dual carriageway locally, and I just want to take it down there, see how it performs there, then see if I can park it in a multi-storey and then might take it on my secret test route and just see how it performs because I just can't help myself. Right, step off out of here. Typical sort of electric car feel coming out of there. I mean, so I was looking at the performance figures on this, and that's sort of overselling it. It's 10 seconds to 60, 90 miles an hour top speed. It's just over 200 horsepower, this electric motor. And not massive high torque in this design. I don't actually think that's a bad thing. This is a family car. It does not need a five second to 60, not 60 time. But in typical electric fashion, it actually feels quicker than it actually is because of that instant step off. What's it grip like around? That is surprising actually. Yeah, that is wet and very slippery tarmac. Yeah, I'm impressed with that actually. I suppose it's that where that battery is positioned. Here we are, 70 miles an hour. I can sort of hear the water, I can hear just a general mechanical noise. Absolutely no wind noise whatsoever. I did my usual thing of measuring the noise in here and it came out at 71, 72 decibels on my super noisy bit of road. So not uber quiet, we have had cars down in the 60s. But yeah, reasonably quiet. I, I think it's because it's such a big box, it's not actually super quiet. I think the first thing that strikes you is just the visibility out. That's a very nice place to be, and I love the clap hands, wipers. There is something, you know, something about VW and seeing those. They're just a great design. I've got two positions. I'm on normal sort of cruise. I can put B on here, and I've got now regen. I'm not doing any braking. I can see it's, it's braking pretty hard just on regen. So if you want one pedal operation, then it's available. Just the two operations. There is even, I notice, a sport setting in this car, which I didn't expect. I've got it in comfort, I think, at the moment. I press mode. 
Yes, I can go to sport. What it does, it's a curve. I don't think I'm going to take this on track. I've done the dual carriageway test. Let's go and try it in a multi-storey car park and see if that size suddenly becomes an issue. This is a bar there. It's like 2.1 metres high. Anyway, we're in. They do actually say it's got a really good turning circle. Uh, 11 metre turning circle is actually quite good. Yeah, do that bit all right. Actually, yeah, it, it does feel reasonably okay. I'm intrigued how, with it being so wide, what it feels like. Can I open the doors? It's important information, this. There's a space there. There is a space over there. Let me go over here. It's not quite as busy. There's a space. Let's try in there. I think it's one of those cars it's actually easier to park back in. But if I go here, right, can I get out? Let's have a look. Oh, I was to get Get out, but can I get in the other side? Actually, it does pass that test, but it's definitely on the big side. We're parking in there. Looks good though. Right, let's get out of here. <laughs> go shopping. Off we go. Yeah, sliding doors on a big family car like this are massive, massive boom. Child seats, clobber. Yeah, once you've tried it, <laughs> you'll love it. And they are talking about a four-wheel drive version coming out and quicker versions, but they're a way off. They're 24, 25, I think, before they turn up. There's just a, apparently there's a long wheelbase version coming in end of 23, and that is the one, it'll be seven-seater, and then that will be the one they turn into the camper van that everybody wants. Anyway. Head out, just go try it on my favourite bits of road, just see how it falls there. I can't get over, I go to climate. There's usual things on climate, but there is also smart climate. I go to smart climate, and then I can do all sorts of fancy things of climate. I can defog windows, I can warm my feet, or warm my hands, cool my feet. So, do you remember when you used to have a vent and you used to just adjust the temperature with a dial? No, not anymore. VW have set it all up as a computer program. Right, let's have a look here. We're just coming up to my normal route. Let's go into sport. Yeah, it all feels vaguely normal. No braking, no down changing, no a bit more regen. Chuck it in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got a traction light to light up. There's no way of turning it off. It didn't, yeah, it went round all right, didn't it? It didn't squeal, but I suppose it's a bit wet. Steering weight. Let's have a look at that weight. If I do put it onto comfort, can I spot the difference? Yes, I can instantly. Massive change. Yeah, down here it swallows everything with comfort on. Yeah, that does ride down here really well. I mean, it is a bit numb at the helm, but then all electric cars are. And the odd thing on this car, I expected the lane departure to be really quite aggressive. It's not, I can feel a little bit on the wheel, but absolutely not invasive as some modern systems are. So I'll take that as a positive. You obviously learned that the super aggressive ones is not a good idea. Brakes, it's a slightly mushy feel when you press the brakes. It's not the nicest of pedals, but very typical of this sort of car. I even noticed it had drum brakes at the back. And a tractor. Do I get any more acceleration in sport? I don't know. Let's see what happens here. So he paid the extra, this chap, for the speedier gearbox. He's doing 30 miles an hour. I'm going to indicate out and let's go past. Yeah, it's not punchy. 
because he's not punched the acceleration on this. There you go. And here, yeah, top is that steering up. Here's the bump. Swallow, no problem at all. He's two and a half tons this car. So it's no surprise that it does swallow bumps. Around O Rouge, let's have a look at it around here. Well, <laughs> it's a thousand percent better handling than the T2, last T2 I drove, VW bus. No, I'm quite impressed with that actually. Dynamically, it's, it's all right. It's not a disgrace at all. So, yeah, likes and dislikes of this car. I suppose, well, yeah, one dislike, I just think they've been slightly unimaginative with sort of the launch additions and how they've done the layout. It's a bit not being able to remove those rear seats. I don't understand, I think they ought to flip up. Having that false floor all seems a bit peculiar to me. Um, and I, I just think they're lacking imagination of what this car could have come out with. I expected it to be launched with a catalogue of accessories, but not so. Two, well, size, it was marginal in that car park space. Slidey doors help, but you know, maybe it's just a big car and we've just got to get used to it. And at least this is the shorter wheelbase when there's plenty of room in here. I would have thought they could do seven seats with this configuration, this layout. But um, yeah, likes, looks, I, I like the looks. I like the purposes, I like the hint back to, you know, the caravan, you know, VW caravanettes and stuff. I, I, you know, it, it appeals to me. Maybe I'm the generation, but I think it's a, it, it's appeal to everyone. It's living that dream. I like the performance. I like its purpose, and I like that it hasn't actually got a huge amount of performance. It's got the right amount of performance for a five-seater family bus to commute in. It's perfectly adequate on motorways. I've got huge visibility here. I'm in a nice place to be, so I like all that. Another nice thing I noticed in the brochure was you can actually tow this car. Not a very big trailer, you won't be towing caravans, but you can tow up to a thousand kilos. So that means with like my bikes, if I'm going off um, out to Wales or something with my enduro bikes, I could tow quite happily behind here or a camping trailer and that sort of thing. Where I think it slightly struggles, if it's selling this adventure and it's an electric car, the one area where you haven't got lots of plug-in areas for uh, electric cars is out in the countryside, where this car is going to aim. When we convert it to a camper van, where we're going to escape to the country, do the bike stuff, is exactly where we haven't got the chargers at the moment. So I would have liked a bit more range, and there is a bigger battery coming. Let's try it round here. Now this will be a real test for it. Oh, that's a bit of roll. I mean, it's very honest. that the drive wheels were at the back but it was way neater around there than it has any right to be so yeah I'm a bit worried about the charge network not actually keeping up with the adventure spirit of this sort of car but that's not a criticism of this car I really like that VW have done it and it makes me think what other icons from the past could be electrified and to be glorified it's those cars where the engine wasn't at the epicenter of the appeal of the vehicle in question. And I would suggest a Citroen DS today, a pure electric form, that pure styling, would be a very attractive car. I look at my Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow, I can see that being electric, and Rolls-Royce are obviously going down that route. But I do like this car. The layout, the battery down below, the space inside, the looks, it's reasonable value. You know, I was looking, it's two and a half tons and 60,000 pounds. That's about 26 pounds a kilo, I think it is. Um, there are a lot more expensive cars than that. It feels as though it's sort of competing with a Land Rover Defender in the style state. I think what's going to happen is all the independents are going to look at this car as a ground base of what they can convert and what they can do with it, just as they did with the Type 2, the VW Cabernet. It was outside companies who modified them all. And I can see that really happening with this ID bus. So there you go, I hope that's given you a little idea what this car is all about. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, well, please keep watching, keep subscribing. Thank you so much everyone who subscribed. There's to be more videos coming along very soon. Thanks for watching.